as per personal request, because I do read my comments as often as I can. Usually I hop on, I make a video, as soon as it goes up I'm working on something else. Or, oh shit, I forgot to finish tiling my bathroom. But, in other news, uh, this has come up. It's been a weird string of events, and I'm not talking about all of a sudden all these Hollywood celebrity males molesting children. No, there are more important things going on. Roger Kaduri leaving AMD for one was kind of, well actually that's not really a surprise to anyone. Everyone who saw Roger Kaduri say, I have to go on a sabbatical, we were all like, this motherfucker's either gonna quit or he's gonna be fucking fired. And lo and behold, he quit. But the big thing is, this all culminates into one, is the fact that Intel has finally confirmed that they're working with AMD for integrated graphics cards. Not a surprise. The rumors about this have been going on for almost a fucking year. And AMD and Intel denied it. And that's all these companies do when rumors come out. They deny, deny, deny. But the second you see a rumor come out and it's tech related, eight times out of ten it's true. Also, a lot of big YouTubers said it was fake. And a lot of uh, tech sites said it was fake. Uh, what was one that said it was fake? Uh, Seeking Alpha said that the AMD Intel rumor was complete fake. Fake news, actually. But anyway, it's all true now. It seems like Intel and AMD have worked together with their Cavi Lake G series. It's a four core, eight logical thread processor. For some reason I was expecting six. Well, it integrates a discrete Radeon GPU, Vega with uh, HBM2. And from the looks of the design, it's very similar to how AMD does the chipsets for consoles. So it makes a lot of sense. And if you see the video, man, this goes in a super thin ass notebook. Before those thin notebooks were for you know, closeted homosexuals and really annoying college girls. I mean, the thing looked like a notepad. It didn't last long, had horrible battery life, and it kind of sucked dick. No respecting gamer would touch one. But this seems to upset the balance of everything. Considering this is offering decent GPU power and CPU power, the new Intel design and packaging innovation reduces silicon footprints by more than 50% enabling real-time power savings across the CPU and GPU for optimal performance. This might actually be a game changer in the CPU gaming market. It won't really compete with the super high end, but it will do well enough. And I know, on the other hand, you sit there and think about the integrated uh, Ryzen graphics with the Ryzen CPU, but I guess, supposedly, this won't hurt AMD because those will all be low-end laptops that'll have that. Speculation. The new product, which will be part of the 8th gen Intel Core family, brings together our high performance Intel Core H series processors, second generation high bandwidth memory, HBM2, and a custom to Intel third party discrete graphics chip from AMD's Radeon Technologies groups, all in a single processor package. In the end, it is actually quite impressive for what it is. Our collaboration with Intel expands the install base for AMD Radeon GPUs and brings to market a differentiated solution for high performance graphics, said Scott Herkelman, Vice President and General Manager of AMD Radeon Technologies. Together, we are offering gamers and content creators the opportunity to have a thinner and lighter PC capable of delivering discrete performance tier graphics experience in AAA games and content creation applications. This new semi-custom GPU puts the performance and capabilities of Radeon graphics into the hands of an expanded set of enthusiasts who want the best value experience possible. This could be really cool if you're looking for it in all honesty. A thin, capable notebook. You can game on it, you can do some moderate content creation, I guess streaming and editing. Nothing too heavy. I don't know if you'll be rocking 4K with this. You could probably render 4K video with this, maybe. I have to really look at the specs deeper. And you don't have to spin an arm and a leg because most of those gaming related laptops, the real hardcore ones, the high end ones, those fuckers are pretty thick and heavy. You could beat someone to death with one of those motherfuckers from ROG. Now, a lot of speculation is this is a move by Intel because they have absolutely nothing in the graphics card market. And let's face it, the integrated graphics on Intel CPUs has been garbage for years. People have wanted it gone for so long it's not even funny. It's like pointless at this point. I think most, no, I don't think the eight, the uh, Coffee Lake CPUs have an integrated graphics, but I could be wrong. I mean, it's just a waste of space and you've got, you had to pay for it fucking anyway. So on the laptop front, this also makes sense. I'm pretty sure getting a discrete graphics solution from AMD is a hell of a lot cheaper than NVIDIA, especially at these price points. 
I'm still sure that there'll be Intel PUs with NVIDIA graphics cards on the high end. I don't think that will ever change. And now back to the uh, conspiracies. Not really conspiracies. Uh, most people believe that this is a move by Intel because they have nothing in the graphics front and they want something to possibly compete with NVIDIA as far as AI goes because AI has been, I mean, NVIDIA has been crushing it in the AI front. They really have no competition in the graphics card front, let's face it. And since GPUs are taking on more workloads that used to be relegated to CPUs, maybe Intel is worried about the future. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend, if you know what I mean. Teaming up with AMD on this front could be a win-win situation. One excerpt here reads as Intel realizes that AMD is not the main threat going forward. AMD's Ryzen is very good, but frankly, AMD can only fight a war for a market in overall decline. While Intel is currently in the defensive mode, the real battle is not in CPU, but rather GPU, if you take a long-term viewpoint. NVIDIA GPUs are taking on more CPU functions with time, and this will only get worse for Intel and AMD. However, the high-end APU market is something that both AMD and Intel lack. Sales here will benefit both companies. The impact on AMD will be minor. As far as the loss of sales, it might have gone to desktop, but for the high-end laptop space, both AMD and Intel stand to benefit. Meanwhile, AMD's Raven Ridge APU will do very well in the low end, in the middle, so it's pretty much the same thing I said earlier. AMD's APUs will cover the low-end market. AMD and Intel will, I'd say this is mid to high-end, but not real super high-end, because let's, well, Vega is performing about as well as a 1080 now, supposedly. So I guess that is high end. Yeah, so I guess they could compete there. Everybody wins, and it's a small, small blow for NVIDIA. I should have done this when I wasn't sleepy, so please forgive me. I sound very lethargic, and it's hard for me to piece together coherent thoughts. Now, this all happened, what, two, three days ago? And Roger Kaduri left AMD a day ago. And it was nothing but people basically trashing Roger Kaduri. I mean, it was hilarious seeing all the comments of people pissing all over the guy. And I guess I could see why he got the ire. He did, because let's face it, Vega was shit. And a lot of the stuff they promised for Vega didn't come. And they also pretty much allowed uh, the community to basically write what they thought Vega was going to do instead of like stopping the hype train that got way out of hand the expectations got too high for Vega Vega didn't deliver and Roger was the man with his head on the chopping block as far as the internet community was concerned so Roger Kaduri left AMD and then strangely enough joins Intel 24 hours later one of the headlines reads as Roger Kaduri to join Intel he would provide tremendous value to Intel's Radeon Synergy as well as the AI chip efforts. Once again, this all kind of comes to a head and just goes together with the theories the community has been spouting. That Intel is trying to get in on AI and combat NVIDIA, which has been pretty much cornered in the market. And if I remember correctly, Elon Musk was looking for to partner with AMD for AI shit for cars or something like that I can't even remember it was like months ago I read the blurb I moved off my life I figured nobody's paying me to give enough of a shit this is a very interesting development because Roger can add tremendous value to someone of Intel's recent initiative like the Cabby Lake G series with the integrated Radeon graphics and its ventures in AI which includes the Nerva chip and autonomous driving applications judging from this letter however his key areas of contribution might actually be to the software side. Drivers, huh? From Roger Kaduri? I don't know. The big drivers weren't exactly burning up the world when they came out. So even this article says that Intel is gunning against AMD in more ways than one. Roger Kaduri was essential in the development of Vega, and his experience as an engineer could prove to be critical for Intel's recent ventures. Intel recently signed a deal with AMD to house the dedicated Radeon graphics inside of their KBLG lineup, which means synergy with the x86 rival is at an all-time high. While Intel will profit from the sales of this full processor, AMD will profit from the deal as well, as it will get a piece of the pie. The other loser in this equation becomes NVIDIA. That part of the statement from WCCF Tech I don't really agree with. 
Nvidia has the market cornered in the GPU front. Nvidia pretty much is the poster child of like every time you see a car with AI in it, it's always motherfucking Nvidia. You see something with AI going on, Nvidia. Nvidia isn't hurting at all. This seems almost like a desperate move. It's like we got to do something and we have to do it now rather than later. And things are proving to be quite interesting on in all honesty. Uh, hopefully Roger Kaduri does well here. Like I've said before in a previous video, a lot of people want to blame Roger Kaduri for Vega. From what I understand, Roger Kaduri came into Vega when he came to uh, Radeon Technologies. I think Vega was already in the works for two years or so when Roger Kaduri is a part of it. And supposedly, you're going to see Roger Kaduri's genius or his influence, I should say, when Nivea or Neva comes out. Then we'll actually see what he contributed. But that was said when he was on a break. Who the hell knows what's going to happen now? Considering Lisa, Lisa Sung, I believe, is taking over Radeon Technologies right now. Let me double check. Well, unfortunately, I can't seem to find it. I know Lisa Sung took over Radeon Technologies when Roger Kaduri went on a break. But then he quit literally two days ago. And I could have sworn I saw an article that said she was taking over... Uh, Radeon Technologies fully, but I can't find it right now. It is past my bedtime. In all honesty, I think Lisa Soon taking over that could prove good for AMD. I mean, she really turned around Ryzen. Maybe she'll do something for AMD's graphics cards, because Lord knows we need it. We really do. Nvidia is out of fucking control. Every time you turn around, they're shitting out a new graphics card. 1070 Ti. There's three versions of the fucking Titan X this generation. Three! Titan X, the official Titan XP, and now the Titan XP Special Edition Star Wars version. What the fuck? What is next? Shit, maybe uh, Intel and AMD need to get together. Shit is getting out of control. Somebody's gotta like pull Nvidia down to earth. And on that note, this video's probably been far too long. My thought process is discombobulated and all over the place. I'm very tired. I apologize for that. But uh, interesting days ahead for PC gaming as a whole. I know they're saying like PC gaming's on decline, but I don't feel like it is. I really don't. Maybe it's because Ethereum is like kind of losing its steam. Who knows? Oh my God, the puppy gets in, the puppy chills out. Now you have something to say. Well, anyway. That's gonna do it for me. Rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to. I can't actually give more of a shit than me in the age of apathy. If you choose to follow me, that's great. If not, it's totally fine by me. But if you do, it makes my voice louder in the gaming and tech industry. It's an industry full of an echo chambers, dude. It's full of a lot of people under a lot of thumbs, taking a lot of checks and shilling to no tomorrow. Right now, YouTube is full of men and women that once stood for something, and now they're no more than sock puppets for corporations. One minute they're outraged, the next minute they're giving interviews and kissing ass. What the fuck? But you won't get that here with me. I'm too old to give a fuck. <laughs> I'm too fucking old. I'm so far over the hill, I'm on the other side. Adios, pichachos.